Welcome back to Hashrate Up Focus. Today, I want to talk about mining on solar. Hashrate Up, hardware sales, advisory, hosting, and site brokerage. Find new and used ASIC deals through the website and the Telegram channel below. Make smarter decisions with Hashrate Up. If you like this format, please leave a subscription, like, or comment. Helps a lot. Shows me that this is valued content and that there's people out there that want to see more of it so yeah if you do let me know mining on solar is a yeah often talked about topic a lot of people have excess solar on their roof a lot of people know somebody that has a solar power plant or know somebody that knows somebody that has one and is now maybe not getting it their subsidies anymore or is not connected to the grid anymore and now it the question becomes can we use that excess capacity to mine bitcoin with short answer yes you can but it really depends on the approach that you take. And in my opinion, there's a lot of discussion around this with, within the industry. I think it only makes sense under very narrow scope and a very uh, narrow set of circumstances. And the right approach definitely matters. And today I want to jump into the numbers of that a little bit and explain what that approach really is. Before we do that, a couple of things to note. Number one, make sure the power is truly stranded. If you lose subsidies because you are self-consuming the power, then the true cost of power is not zero. The opportunity cost is whatever the subsidy was before you, you considered mining, right? So the tr true power cost has to be zero for this to make any sense at all. And secondly, the baseline to make sure that this is economically viable should always be, you know, should I take the money and buy Bitcoin instead? Will that increase the purchasing power? Is that a more viable choice? And do I let the kilowatt hours go to waste? Because if I can just buy Bitcoin with the money, I don't have any hassle. I don't have any risk. And um, yeah, my purchasing power will, will be more than what it would be if I bought the ASIC. And this topic can spark some discussion, I hope. There's some folks in the industry who completely defend mining on solar and uh, think it's a great idea and built their whole business around it. I tend to think... You know, again, there's only this very narrow set of circumstances that we'll cover today in which mining on solar makes sense. So please send this to anybody who considers mining on solar or wants to learn more about how the economics work around it. Without further ado, let's jump into a beautiful spreadsheet. Here we have it, a beautiful spreadsheet, right? On the left, you've got mining on solar, one megawatt with a profit share agreement. And on the left, you have the same idea with a fixed power price that you might be able to negotiate with your um, power provider or solar park owner. Um, on the left, two columns. On the right, two columns, E and F, J and K, S21 Pro on the left, M30S units on the right. I will prerequisite this by saying the narrow scope that I referenced earlier is that you need to use old, inefficient, sorted out units that have run their course uh, at another site when network hash rate was way lower and now are paperweight somewhere and can be acquired for very, very cheap. The reason I say that we will see in the numbers, but without further ado, let's start at the top, right? So on the left, you have S21 Pros and M30s. Here, we've got an uptime of 30%. This is the amount of miners it takes us to run about one megawatt of load. Your average hash price in dollars per petahash per day is around 50. Needless to say that uptime on solar, I guess not needless to say, is depending on where you are, always between 20 and 40%, right? So I took the gold middle here um, with an approximation of 30% uptime um, where the sun shines and enough power is available to power a megawatt or even ramp up, right? We're not going to go into the intricacies because it's not going to change the narrative um, of what I'm trying to say here. The purchase price for the miner is 4,300 respectively. They both consume about the same amount of kilowatts. The hash rate is, of course, vastly higher on the left than on the right. And the total spend for the megawatt of miners will be 1.15 million or $90,000. Um, there's 30.41 days in a month, 365 divided by 12. And then we have the revenue per kilowatt hour, which we referenced in a previous video, and the revenue share. Again, the revenue share idea and what that does economically to a deal that you find with your operator, I will um, explain a little bit later. The electricity cost here is zero because you are sharing a part of your revenue, and that's what you give to the operator as a cost. 
in your case, the total hash rate, 67 petahash or 23 and a half petahash. Of course, the total revenue therefore is 30.5K and 10.7K on the right. Big difference is there. The revenue share in this in this example, so your true cost in this model that you have to give to the operator would be about $7,631 per month and $5,300 on the right. Your profit and loss, therefore, ends up being 23 versus 5.3K. And this is the important number right here, right? What's the ROI? When do I have my money back? In dollar terms, right? It's 50 months versus 60 months. BidX, solomining.de, got it. Premium made in Germany. You want to go fancy? Go for NerdX or NerdQX++ for a lot of power. Worldwide shipping, check out solomining.de today. Now, on the right-hand side, it's exactly the same thing. But in, that ca in this case, you have 0% revenue share. Right. And instead you negotiated with your solar park um, owner a energy cost of four cents flat. Right. So first and foremost, why do I prefer the revenue share model? Right. It does a couple of things. First of all, you are protected to the downside. Right. If hash price tanks, then you are protected to the downside. You can stay online. You don't fall below the cost of power and technically have to shut off the machine. Secondly, Yes, you share some upside, but in my opinion, that's well worth it, right? So if hash price goes to 100, now everybody parties together and everybody's having a good time. Third of all, most importantly, it makes for a more symbiotic relationship between the solar park owner and the Bitcoin mine operator, right? Remember, we're trying to outfit the solar park with additional flexibility now that they don't have additional sources of revenue anymore. So having a symbiotic relationships, making sure that everybody's lives is easy and working together really is, is what is achieved. Because now the more the machines run, the more the solar park operator makes and there's a more direct incentive um, compared to the blue model where it's just, hey, I send you a bill, there's a meter, that's it, right? Oh, it's a weekend, I'm not there. You know, those are scenarios that can happen and I just like the revenue share model um, for those two, two main reasons. It creates a synergy and also very importantly, protects your operation on a solar park, mining on a solar park, to the downside. So even if um, hash price tanks goes to 30, 35, 40 or whatever, you don't fall below that dreaded cost of power, right? So I can visualize that here on the right. Let's say um, our hash price goes to 35, right? That should do it. Then now our revenue per kilowatt hour is 3.4 cent. Okay, cool. Maybe let's do 30, right? Now we're below the three cent power mark and we have to shut off the mine, right? In this case, on the left, all that happens is that um, we pay less revenue share, but we still stay online. The machines keep running, right? And as I referenced in the, in the focus episode about hash price two, what happens here now is that, yes, hash price tanks, but it tanks for everybody, the whole network, right? So there's a lot of people who have to shut off your mine their mind before you have to, which lowers the difficulty, makes it easier for you to mine and increases your revenue. Again, please go and refer to that episode. This is why I do these because this is all sort of interlinking together. Now, what I'm trying to say here, most importantly is, let's put this back to 50, um, is the ROI point. You want to make your money back as quickly as possible, right? You don't want to wait 50 months because your machine and your capex is so um your machine is so expensive and your capex is so high you cannot wait 50 months you cannot wait 50 months on the right either um waiting you know 16 months or 21 months is a lot more palatable still not great but more palatable now if you can get the machine for even cheaper let's call it 200 on the right and on the left Right now it's 14 and 10 months and this is below a year. And, you know, th this is, this is then becoming more worth, more worth doing. Right. But remember, it's important that the power is truly, truly stranded because that effectively puts the solar park operator, as harsh as that sounds, into a scenario where they can take it or leave it. Right. They can either take the deal or they can make nothing. Right. And. That sounds harsh, but unfortunately, that's the, the 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 idea of things. You can always agree to say, look, I want my money back first, and then we can go 50-50, or you can get a more profitable split or something like that. Um, 
But the main idea I want to get across with this video is mining on solar makes no sense with new machines. They need to run a lot more than 30% on average during the year. Mining and then saying, oh, I'm mining the Bitcoin and then I'm holding it and then it's worth it. That's really, you know, lying to yourself because you could have just bought the Bitcoin and uh, would have profited profited the same or even more um, and would have had way less risk. So the risk adjusted return just, you know, is way higher just buying the Bitcoin and holding on to it. Yeah, and that's really it. I am happy to share this, use it. You can use it to compare your own maybe concrete scenario. Let me know what you think, mining on solar, if it's worth it or not, right? These numbers apply whether you have your own solar on your roof or whether, you know, you work with somebody else. The ideas are always the same. You know, I'm not going to buy an, a new S21 XP or S21 Pro or M60S Plus machine if I have a little bit of solar available at my house, unless it's a hobby, right? If you want this to be financially viable and you want to have more sets at the end of the day, than you would have had just buying the Bitcoin, then it doesn't make sense to buy new and shiny, efficient gear. You have to go with the, yeah, run its course, all the models that are available for very, very cheap, right? If you need help sourcing units, come and talk to me. There's a Telegram channel with used units. I can always find more, right? If you need to find those paperweights for your next solar project, please let me know. Happy to consult on this as well if you think it's necessary. And yeah, let me know what you think about this and tell me if I missed anything. All the best.